thrombocytopenia in newborn let's begin with definition the classical definition of thrombocytopenia is considered when platelet count is less than 1.5 lakhs it is of three types based on severity mild 1 to 1.5 lakhs moderate 50000 to 1 lakh and severe when platelet count is less than 50000 thrombocytopenia is inversely proportional to maturity thus the preterm have high chances of thrombocytopenia as compared to term now let's see the approach of thrombocytopenia uh, thrombocytopenia can be divided into two types based on onset if it is less than 72 hours it is called as early onset thrombocytopenia and more than 72 hours then late onset thrombocytopenia let's discuss the key points in early onset thrombocytopenia the most common cause of early onset thrombocytopenia or the eot in well appearing baby is placental insufficiency that is due to failure of placenta to provide enough nutrient and oxygen to tissues this condition can be seen in mothers with pih preeclampsia or diabetes in those with iugr note in cases of severe early onset thrombocytopenia that is the count less than 50000 in a well appearing baby the most common cause is immune mediated thrombocytopenia but if the baby is ill appearing then the most common cause is sepsis other causes can be birth asphyxia dic note dic or disseminated intravascular coagulation most common due to sepsis but can also be due to birth asphyxia the other causes of eot are tar that is thrombocytopenia with absent radius note if a neonate with radial abnormalities but normal appearing thumb comes with thrombocytopenia then suspect tar syndrome here the patient has platelet count usually below 50000 and may have wbc count more than 1 lakh mimicking leukemia infants who survive more than 1 year generally do well because platelet count then spontaneously improves to low normal and maintained throughout the life another diagnosis associated with thrombocytopenia is atrus that is a mega karyocytic thrombocytopenia with radio ulnar stenosis in this the patient is unable to rotate the forearm since the proximal fusion of radio ulnar joint radio ulnar examination or the radiological examination of the confirms the fusion another genetic disorder associated with thrombocytopenia is fanconi's anemia which usually present in the childhood but may sometimes seen here in these the patient thumb abnormalities are usually found along with chromosomal fragility test which is nearly always diagnostic other rare causes include trisomy 21 18 13 turner syndrome noonan syndrome and jacobson syndrome now let's see the approach to early onset thrombocytopenia the early onset thrombocytopenia can be divided into two types if a patient comes with platelet count between 50000 to 1.5 lakhs then mild to moderate thrombocytopenia is considered and here we should look at the baby if the baby is appearing well then most common cause is placental insufficiency and hence reassure and call for follow up 10 days later but if still low then we need to further investigate the child now if the baby is appearing ill then look for sepsis or dic if the sepsis is present then manage accordingly and if sepsis is not present then we have to consider some other causes now let's see the second type that is if the thrombocytopenia is severe and the platelet count is less than 50000 then one must first evaluate for sepsis if the sepsis is present then manage accordingly but if no sepsis is present or dic is present then consider neonatal alloimmune thrombocytopenia but if still not then look for maternal thrombocytopenia or baby may have associated syndromes like tar syndrome atrus fanconi's anemia or trisomy 13 18 or 21 if any of the above is found then manage accordingly if none then we may look for torch profile viral infection or the inborn errors of metabolism or renal vein thrombosis 
you may pause the video here and draw it and then go a little back and again look at the key points in early onset thrombocytopenia. Now let's focus on the late onset thrombocytopenia that is thrombocytopenia which occurs 72 hours after life. The most common cause of LOT is sepsis or necrotizing enterocolitis. Other causes include viral causes which may include HSV, CMV or the enterovirus. The catch here is that viral causes late onset thrombocytopenia are associated with abnormal liver enzyme levels. So do check them. Now coming to another cause that is drug induced thrombocytopenia which may be you caused by drugs like heparin, antibiotics like penicillin, cephalosporin, metronidazole, vancomycin, indomethacin, phenobarbital and phenytoin etc. Now let's see another important topic that is novel markers or the newly found markers. These are the upcoming markers in the knowing the cause of thrombocytopenia. IPF or the immature platelet fraction which measures the percentage of newly released platelets in 24 hours. The IPF can be measured along with standard CBC machine. It is similar to reticulocyte count which is considered to evaluate anemia. Coming to another novel marker that is RP that is reticulated platelet which are basically newly produced platelets with RNA and can be measured with flow cytometry. Note, if RP is less than 2%, it indicates that there is decreased platelet production and if the RP is more than 10%, it indicates that increased destruction of platelet is present. Let's move ahead. Now let's focus on another important topic that is immune thrombocytopenia. It is basically antibody mediated decreased platelet count. Here there occurs passive transmission of antibody from mother to fetus. It is of two types that is alloimmune and autoimmune. Alloimmune is also called as NAIT that is neonatal alloimmune thrombocytopenia. The antibodies produced in the mother against a specific human placental antigen which is absent in the mother and present in the fetus. The antigen is inherited from the father of the fetus in response to an, this antigen the mother produces antibodies. This antibodies that is anti-HPA crosses the placenta and reaches to the fetal circulation and uh, this in the fetus it causes destruction of the platelets and the inhibition of megakaryocytic development and thus thrombocytopenia. This mechanism can be understood by this picture also. Now let's move ahead. This picture again explains clearly the concept behind the alloimmune thrombocytopenia. Look at its fourth point, you can see that dreaded effect of low platelets that is intracranial hemorrhage. Hence, it is important to have in-depth understanding in this topic. Let's move ahead. Now let's see the key points on neonatal alloimmune thrombocytopenia. The NAIT should be considered in any neonate with early onset severe thrombocytopenia who appears healthy. If a neonate presents with ICH and thrombocytopenia in early days of life, then NAIT is very likely the cause. Coming to the lab diagnosis, it is similar as Combs test for RH antibodies. The difference here is that here we also take father's blood and add maternal antibodies to see platelets clumping and same way we do with neonatal's blood also. Majority of the patients are asymptomatic. NAIT is a self-resolving condition. Usually, it uh, resolves entirely in two weeks. Now, coming to the management of NAIT. In severe cases of thrombocytopenia in the first week of life, if the patient is clinically stable and no evidence of ICH is found, then we observe. But if platelet count is less than 30,000, then we transfuse RDP. If the patient is unstable, but with no ICH, then we transfuse platelets if the platelet count is less than 50,000. We also give IVIG in the dose of 1 gram per kg per day for 2 days. 
If ICH is present, then we maintain platelet count for more than 1 lakh, call at the blood bank and order cross-match antigen-free platelets either from HPA, 1B, 1B and 5A, 5A donors or from the patient's mother. Note, these maternal platelets are used after centrifuging and removing plasma thoroughly. Another treatment modality might be MPS or the methyl prednisolon at the dose of 1 mg per kg BD for 3 to 5 days given in non-responders to above treatment. Now let's move ahead. Prevention of NAIT that is antenatal management. Note in the mothers with previously delivered NAIT infant need strict follow up as 20% of the NAIT can develop ICH and of which 50% are seen in in utero only. Me hence, maternal treatment is necessary. The maternal treatment is done in the pregnancy only. We give IVIG at the dose of 1 gram per kg per week and steroids that is 0.5 to 1 milligram per kg per day. Prednisolone may be used. IVIG may be started at weekly at the dose of 1 gram per kg per week at 12 weeks or 20 weeks of gestation to 26 weeks of gestation. The mode of delivery to be chosen is elective c-section and hence to avoid ICH. Note this aggressive management is tailor based and must be done in view of the outcome of the previously delivered child that is whether developing any complication or not. Now let's see another important topic that is autoimmune thrombocytopenia. Note here the mother is producing antibodies for herself as well as for the neonates. The diagnosis of the autoimmune thrombocytopenia is considered if the neonate has early onset thrombocytopenia along with maternal history of immune thrombocytopenic purpura or an autoimmune disease. It is recommended that all the neonates born to the mother who have autoimmune disease should undergo a screening platelet count done at or shortly after birth. Now let's see the approach to autoimmune thrombocytopenia. Let's look at the case with mild thrombocytopenia. Here we repeat the platelet count 2 to 3 days later since nadir or the lowest level of the platelet are seen between 2 to 5 days of life. Now if the platelet counts are less than 30,000 then we prefer to start IVIG at the dose of 1 gram per kg per day for 2 days. But if the neonates present with active bleeding then we have to give both IVIG and RDP that is random donor platelets. Note that if the platelet count is less than 50,000 then USG cranium should be done to rule out ICH. Remember that any neonate diagnosed with autoimmune thrombocytopenia must be again screened at 4 to 6 weeks of age. If the platelet count is low, he or she may require the second dose. IVH, ICH or the fetal hemorrhage are rarely seen in the cases of autoimmune thrombocytopenia. In comparison, there is a small but definite risk of hemorrhage in alloimmune thrombocytopenia. Hence, here the treatment during pregnancy is not so aggressive unlike alloimmune and is mostly based on risk of maternal hemorrhage. Hence, unlike alloimmune, here the mode of delivery is based on obstetric indications only. Now let us see what we have studied so far. Let us summarize. Thrombocytopenia are of two types, early onset and late onset, based on less than 72 hours and more than 72 hours. Early onset uh, can be mild, moderate, severe or immune mediated, which can be NAIT, that is neonatal alloimmune thrombocytopenia, autoimmune thrombocytopenia. Let's see the treatment. The treatment includes RDP, IVIG, steroids. We also monitor platelet counts rule out ICH with the help of USG and do remember to revise the key points. Thank you.